What's up, guys? Doug Polk here, and we are here live for an exclusive interview with Nick Airball. We'll be joining us to talk about the latest on this Hustler saga revolving around Garrett playing on Hustler Casino Live, as well as his comments made about Nick yesterday. But before we do that, I want to jump in and get you up to speed with exactly what happened so you guys aren't uh, in the dark here. Just to kind of give you a brief timeline of the way that things went down. Yesterday, I posted a video where I talked about a podcast that Nick Vertucci did with Blank Chet Ben, where they essentially talked about is Garrett Adelstein banned or not. Uh, it kind of went back and forth a little bit where essentially the cliff notes are he's not allowed to play in the near future or he's not going to be able to play in the near future. Is that the word banned or not? Sort of unclear and it went back and forth. This caused a little bit of a media confusion where some articles getting posted, he is banned or he isn't banned. And obviously there was debate that went on online. Uh, the next step on this culminated in Garrett responding, saying that he enjoyed the video uh, and that you're going to see him back on stream soon enough. A fire has been lit, uh, to which he responded with a pretty aggressive comment about Nick Airball saying, PC Garrett has died. Airball is a bad poker player and a much worse human being. Fuck that guy, uh, which is a little bit, I think, caught people off guard. It's usually not the kind of language you see from Garrett. Uh, very strong words. Nick uh, came back and, and had a few things to say as well. Uh, there were a few different tweets, actually, that uh, he wanted to say. But essentially, he said things like, I'm a bad person. I don't block people from games. I don't rank the recreational players I want to play with. I battle anyone. And most importantly, when I get owned, I don't ask for a refund. At this point, a lot of other Hustler Casino Live players jumped in to also talk about this. Uh, Brown Bala uh, had some nice things to say about Nick as well saying, I'm not sure where you get the idea that he's a bad person. I've gotten to know Nick quite well, and he has good intentions. Uh, he has a few other things to say here as well. Uh, Luis Brazil God apparently got blocked by G-Man. He's also been commenting about Nick. Uh, and even uh, Wesley, who has been, play been playing a little bit less these days, but I think has been back playing the last couple of weeks, uh, talks about Garrett's uh, straddle policing, where he pushes the straddles every game and uh, tries to make people uncomfortable. So uh, a lot a lot to talk about here. And uh, with no further ado, let's go ahead and add in today's guest. We are joined by Nick Airball. Nick, thank you for joining us. What's up, Doug? I liked when you when you hopped on here earlier and you're like, what's up, guys? And I'm like, oh, I like it. <laughs> getting ready today. Um, anyway, thank you for taking the time. I know it is bright and early over there at 9, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Probably not your normal uh, morning routine to hop on and do an interview. But I do appreciate you, you coming on here and uh, – and making this happen no problem all right so let's just jump right into it let's let's talk a little bit about what happened um when you first saw this this response from garrett uh actually let's actually let's do the garrett thing second let's start off with the garrett being banned piece because i think that's kind of what really got this ball rolling so did you see the vertucci interview with blank check ben and i guess as someone with inside knowledge of the way that these games function what what was your understanding of, of if Garrett was banned? Is he not banned? And what what was your thoughts about the interview that Nick did? Yeah, I mean, so I think they didn't really communicate that well in the interview exactly what they meant by, like, Garrett's banned. I don't think Garrett's banned in the sense that Ryan and Nick are like, you can't come to Hustler, or maybe, like, at the time, you know? It was more of a, there's no game for Garrett to play at Hustler, as in, if he shows up on any given Friday to play, there's not a player pool that's going to play with him that he's willing to play against. So what I mean by that is, you know, when I, for example, when I came to the lodge and sat down and played with you guys, that lineup, like Garrett would never play that lineup, even though it might be willing to play with him. So there's no game for Garrett at Hustler right now. And that's, that's what I think the main point is. And so it's not necessarily a question of like, is he banned or not invited or invited or, whatever it's just like there's no game so it's not really a question like, there's, there's just no game when you say there's no game do you mean that the games aren't good enough for him to play or do you mean that the player pool will not play with him the player pool won't play with him and of the players that would play with him he won't play in those games because they're not good enough for him i see okay yeah this is something where i've seen uh, i've actually been talking to a number of the hcl regs kind of behind the scenes here and it seems like there there are a lot of people that that feel like they're unhappy with the way that Garrett handled himself when it came to the sort of the way that he played with the other players at the table. You mentioned a few different things, talking about things that he did. What were some of the things that he, he's done that has really sort of driven this these complaints from the player pool at the Hustler? I mean, I think there's like different 
scales of things. So like in game stuff, it's it's small things. It's you know demanding everyone straddles. You know, someone gets up to go to the bathroom, you owe a straddle, like stuff like that, where it's, yeah, is it technically correct? Sure. But that's not what the spirit of these high stakes games is, especially when you're the best player, you're, you know, picking the lineups you play, you're game selecting hard, you're, you know, bum hunting, all this other crap that he's doing. Like, I kind of think you should just straddle and do all this stuff. So that's like one thing that I know upset a lot of players, like this whole like posting thing, like. I don't know if this is not necessarily known, but every game besides Friday at Hustler for the longest time, we didn't have anyone post to come in. Like if you went to go to the bathroom and you missed your blinds, just come in behind. It's fine. It's a, it's a private game on Fridays. Like you'd get upset and basically force Ryan to have a posting rule. And like, same thing with like the time clock, like all this kind of stuff. Like we, the time clock disappeared as soon as he disappeared. So stuff like that from the games bothered players. I mean, it's just the reality is like people see it for what it is, which is like him trying to get, the most money possible as fast as possible. And at some point, like the recreational players feel kind of gross about that. When you say the time clock, you mean the shot clock buttons, right? Yeah. Or the shot... Yeah. So I, I saw you guys when I came out and played shot clock was in effect. And mm -hmm. um, then I've seen lately the streams have not had it. We've kind of talked about that over at our stream about whether we should have it or not. I, I can see some reasonable arguments can be made both ways. What, 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 what are you saying that happened with that? Like you think that the fact that Garrett isn't playing now has, has impacted the fact there's no shot clock button. Yeah, I mean, he was the biggest proponent for the shot clock. That was the reason it was brought in in the first place, and, and which is kind of ironic since he probably takes the most time. But um, I think that, like, as soon I think the shot clock in general in games makes the game very serious. Like, it's just it it goes from being a game to being like competition. You got ten seconds to act, five, four. You know, every hand is like that. It, it makes the game a lot more pressure for the recreational players. I I just think it's really bad for the game, and so you know, that was the norm for a while. And after, you know, Garrett took, took a step back from Hustler, I think we all kind of just agree, like, we don't need the shot clock, nor do we want the shot clock. It's just way more fun to play without it. And we just, I mean, the games are good. No one's going to be wasting time. Right. Yeah. And, and if you get the right lineup, that that can definitely be the case. And I think I think there's a, a line to walk, right? And I think you did a good job with Jungle when you came and played on our show, where if someone starts to tank a lot, just start needling them. And then it, it, it's like a social pressure and because of the th I think the thing is like with the shot clock people don't want to feel like there's pressure three seconds you have to act but also you don't want people that are taking just way too long and I think like there's a there's like an art to kind of needling people and joking with people and getting them to be like hey man you're taking too fucking long here and then like they kind of will realize it's also like who, I mean this is just sounds unfair but this is just the truth in poker it depends on who's taking a long time it's true. Like yeah. if jungle's taking a long time, that's just unacceptable. If I'm taking a long time, that's just unacceptable. Like it's just not, you know. Right. But if some of the recreational players decide they want to take five minutes to think about a decision, like that's fine. The the game runs because the recreational players are there. The whole ecosystem works because they're there. Like you don't get a like it's just not equal. Like because they give something and you don't. And so if they want to take ten minutes, take ten minutes. Like. I'm like never going to call the clock on a recreational player. I'll call the clock on the pros literally as fast as I fucking can because I don't think it matters at all. Like I think, I mean, I think if all the pros got like a 30 second shot clock in all the cash games and all the recreational players didn't, that'd be great with me. Like all, it's just, it's to me, it's pretty black and white. Yeah. I think, I think it, for, for at least the way that I look at it, if someone has a really big decision, like if you're in a big pot, even for the pros, whoever it is, like, I think it's totally reasonable to take some time. The, the, the real problem is when, like, you have, like, pre-flop tanking and, like, stuff like that, where it's just like, come on, man, you just got to... I mean, it's just it's just about the goodwill you build up. If you, if right. you play fast all day and then you want to take your time, it doesn't matter who you are, everyone's going to be fine with it. If you play slow all day, people notice and, like, get annoyed. And eventually, like, people don't care if you have a big spot. I don't care if you have a big spot if you've been tanking all day. You've already used your tank, your tanks. Like, it's like if you're playing online, you already used your time bank, like... It's gone now, buddy. Like now, I'm calling shot clock, and we're gonna move on. I think goodwill is a good way to put it. But going back to the straddles, so this confuses me a little bit because I've heard multiple people say this about Garrett. I, I I haven't watched enough of when Garrett played to say that that he does this. So I'm just taking people's word at face value on this. But it is strange to me if you're the best player in the game or you're a good player in the game to get really nitty on the straddles and posts. I just don't really understand that because. If you're a good player, you're going to be winning either way. Why do you think he's trying to really enforce these rules? Like, what what do you think is the driving force behind him doing that? I mean, so I think with Garrett, it's kind of interesting. So I think, let me just kind of go backwards a little bit. So like when I got into poker, I was in college watching Live at the Bike, watching Garrett. I was in China. I'd wake up at 6 a.m. to watch the streams. Super into it. 
the stream I cared the most about was the Friday stream. The person I wanted to watch was Garrett. You know, he back then I remember he would be drinking, playing the most hands, giving the most action, talking in big pots, like put someone all in as a bluff and then just start eating his pasta, shit like that. And I was just like, this is sick. Like, this is what it's about. Like, this guy's just like the top dog, like the biggest alpha, like the boss. And then coming in like over time, basically what I think is Garrett, when he first started at Live at the Bike or whatever, he f- realized that these games are very good and there's value for him there. And so he wanted to do everything he could to maintain his seat. And then I think as time passed, he started to feel like he was more valuable than the show and like he was the show. And so rather than feeling like he needs to be good for the game and do the right things, he started to like just take more and take more and take more and like making it more, more, like more EV for him basically. And so like part of that's like everyone's straddling, like his EV is higher. Like if he straddles alone, his EV is lower. Like I, I just think that's how he sees it. And I think he just chooses to pick every spot to win every dollar. And so like the straddles is an easy way to just like make him money. Like the straddle goes on in theory, he's just making more money. Right. So you just think it's a pure EV calc with no regard for sort of future value in games and stuff because he thinks he'll just get into the games anyway. For sure. I mean, it's like there's been games where before the game, like it's negotiated. We're not going to straddle today because certain players ask not to. And I'm happy to play, for example, as big as possible. I promise. And I'm happy to put the straddles on voluntarily every time. I promise. But if someone says specifically, like a recreational comes to me, a player comes to me, which happens almost every single time I play and it has specific requests about the straddles. For example, like last Friday when I lost 750K before the game, multiple players came to me and said, can we keep the straddle to every, to every dealer change? Which we did until I got stuck half a million. And then they were like, we can just put it on for you, buddy. So like, that's kind of oh, like... no, did the internet go out? Is it my internet or is it Nick's... Are we coming back? Oh, I think the internet went out briefly. Are we back? Sorry about that, guys. I, I don't know if it was my end or your end or what or, street, or the the client, but I think we're back here. Sorry, what were you saying about the straddles? No, I was just saying, like, I think, like, the way to handle straddles in these games is you just straddle. Like, you just do it. it it's, it's actually, like, the funny thing is people don't understand how to calculate EV. That's just the truth. Like, people have no clue. You can – there's two ways to do it. You can calculate it in a vacuum or you can calculate it as in a, as a big picture thing. And when you calculate it as a vacuum, yeah, being the only person putting on an $800 straddle every time is pretty bad. But when you look at it in the big picture of I get invited back, I get to play. Also, playing the, the last – if you just voluntarily straddle yourself in a really good game, it's actually not negative EV. You just get to play another hand in a bigger pot. Like you get to defend a hand and play against fish. Like that's plus EV. Every time you get to enter a pot in these games, you're winning money. So like putting the straddle on is actually not bad. Like it's just not. It's just a fact. And – I just think like he doesn't see it this way. He just sees it as like each decision individually. And to be fair to him, like, I guess at the end of the day, like poker is an individual pursuit. And like, if he chooses to be nitty, like in every spot and just act in his own best interest, that's fine. But then like, eventually the players are going to get upset. And like the players have been upset about Garrett for, for a long time. This is not like a new thing. It's just people were not necessarily willing or, didn't see like didn't see how it could change. Does that make sense? Like it's just yeah. like the norm is Garrett runs the show. Like it's just been a known thing that like, Garrett runs the show. Garrett, like well, the Friday right. is. Yeah. So I so I have some questions about that because to me, I, I, you have to put some responsibility on Feldman and Vertucci, right? right? And especially Feldman because he runs things more day to day. But mm-hmm. if you have a player and they're really important, there are certainly things you're gonna some sacrifices you're gonna have to make to make sure they're in the game. But it's still your show. And if we had a player who said, and they were important, they said, hey, this person's in, this person's out. I don't want this person, et cetera. We would say, hey, you know, we're going to do our best to create the best lineups here, but you do not run or own the show. And if it's going to be this person or I'm not there anymore, then we're just going to do our own thing without you. I do you think, think Feldman like, should have done something like that? Or what, what are your thoughts on that? I think that's like a nice thought in theory, but I just think it's not like as practical. I mean, at the end of the day, like these are complicated interpersonal relationships. And like, the way the relation Garrett has a relationship with Ryan, whatever that is, right? That relationship obviously is very like has an interesting dynamic of Garrett feels to some extent, or clearly to me, Garrett feels based on like his tweets and stuff he likes and all this shit, like he made Ryan, he made Live at the Bike, he made Hustler. And so he has like a lot of entitlement, I think, in terms of like being allowed to play whenever he wants and all this stuff. At the same time, I think Ryan sees it a little differently now, which is maybe at one point when Hustler was like, relying on Garrett a lot he maybe felt like wow we really need Garrett and so I need to bend to his demands basically to make sure that we have like our star 
with Garrett being gone, I think Brian has kind of like, just been like, we're fine without him. Like we just don't like you just, it's a scary thing to go from having a show that I think based around him to like losing him. Like that's scary for them probably. And so I think part of this is like over the years, Garrett has leveraged Ryan. I mean, it's just a fact, like whether it be like, you know, he's scheduled in a lineup and he, someone's added that he doesn't want to play. And he just says, I'm not going to play unless you take him out. And like, obviously that looks bad when Ryan's advertised Garrett's going to be here and it's big game and everyone's excited or like telling Ryan, like, if you don't change this lineup, I'm going to go play live with the bike instead. Like that's so lame. It's so are, are those, are those threats that, you know, Garrett has made to Ryan? Yeah, Those are facts. Ryan can verify those. So like, like, I mean, like think about that. Like, Doug, like if you, let's say you invited me to a game and over the course of a couple of years, like, everything I made is from that game, which is the truth. Like people like Garrett likes to give up this persona. Like he's some like high stakes crusher in the shadows, like playing 1 million, 2 million all the time. Like, you know, always like, Oh, my volume's all at one K two K. That's all nonsense. Like every dollar Garrett's made in poker. It's pretty accountable. Like, and it's all like from bum hunting. So that's just the truth. So like, I mean, we want to break down the money Garrett's made in poker and live poker. Like in California, he bum hunted like one of the juiciest San Diego games that was built around like, Matt Kirk, JRB, um, Rick Solomon, other players. Eventually, they barred him from the game after he won over a million because they found out how hard he was grinding the game. Then when Commerce had their juicy games built around that big-time lawyer, uh, I don't really want to say the name, but I think like everyone in poker knows, um, there's a big-time lawyer in L.A. These Commerce games were running around. Garrett basically poached him to play him heads up, beat him for five million or more than $5 million in one month. At like The stakes ended at like 501K or 1K, 2K. And then, like, all of this was right around the time Garrett was getting into the streams. Like, it's not like he came onto the streams and he was just, like, infinite. Like, and then all the money since then he's made is all from the streams. So it's all pretty, like, accountable. And, like, the, the, the narrative he gives and everything is just fake. Like, it's just fake. <laughs> and it's, just, like, kind of pathetic, to be honest. Like, it's, it's just, like, everyone knows in, in L.A., in the high-stakes scenes, people know the truth about, like, everything. Like, it's just – the truth is just out there. It's hard to hide it, you know? And, like, I think there's, like, a huge disconnect between, like, what the players know and what the fans know. And that's, like, the interesting thing. Like, I don't think the fans have this, like, understanding of, like, Garrett blocking players and how he can leverage Ryan and how, like, it's just kind of gross. Like, you know, like, Ryan is giving Garrett all this opportunity and then, like, he's just going and, like, leveraging him for even more and trying to take more money and more dollars. And, like, you know, like, there was a time where I was running – um not running, but like helping to organize games on Saturday and we would play every Saturday. This is like maybe for a couple months period. And it was like, uh, you know, we play like 50, hundred ish, nothing too crazy. And I would organize the games completely text everyone. And then I would send the lineups to Ryan on Saturday. And I'd say, Hey, like, this is what we're doing at Saturday at 11 AM. If you guys want to come record us, show up and record. And like when those, when that was happening, Garrett was fucking pissed. He wasn't invited to those games. And was pissed that like I was doing that and stuff. And like, he saw it as like, he's entitled to being in every game and every lineup that he chooses to be in. Why, why would you like allow Nick to not invite him or whatever? And just stuff like that. Like it just eventually gets like a little too like grindy and gross and grimy. Yeah. It's confusing to me because so I guess from, from someone not in the, in the scene, because you, you, you have really good, a really good idea the way that Garrett has made his money in the last five, 10 years or whatever. I knew Garrett when he played online and post on two plus two a lot. So I knew him as a battler, as someone that played in all these games, as someone that played a lot of regs, and then he transitioned into live poker in LA. And then, in, at least to me, I didn't really hear anything f from there until the streams. So I think to a lot of outside people that knew Garrett from back in the day, you just kind of assumed he was just playing a lot of these games and crushing them. You don't, we don't have the backstories that, that you talked about today. Yeah, I mean, like he's like he's been pulling like this political shit or whatever you want to call it in poker forever. And like it's just like if you get kicked out of every game you're invited to and the like because the player pool has issues with you eventually like there's like a common denominator and it's him like it's just i mean like you can't you can't just always take from people like that's what it is like you can't just always be for yourself and like poker is an individualistic pursuit everyone wants to say like you can just do what's in your own best interest sure but then like don't complain when you're not invited to private games don't complain when you don't get the best spots because you're choosing to act in your own best interest in the same way the other people are going to act in their own best interest. And right. like right now, like the issue with Garrett really isn't that, I mean, Garrett coming on a stream right now would probably do sick viewership. I think we can all agree. Right. Yeah. For sure. I think we can also all agree that like, I mean, every stream would love to capture that viewership for sure. Right. And the easiest stream to have him back on is hustler, but 
there's literally no ability to have a stream with him. Like you just can't because if the players who would play, like I would show up and play, I'm sure uh, like Henry would play. I'm sure art would play. I'm sure Brown Bala would play. Like I- I'm sure I can get you eight guys who would play on a Friday, 500, 1000 with Garrett. No problem. We would play, but he won't play with us. So there's just like an imbalance there. And like, there's just, there's other things that people don't know about like lineup stuff. I mean, Garrett <laughs> had a rating system for the players, like a rating system. One is the lowest rating. 10 is the highest 10, meaning he wants you to play every Friday. One meaning he doesn't want to play with you, dude, you're playing against all recreational players. and like three pros. You don't need to rank the players or rate the players and be going back and forth telling Feldman, this, this hedge fund manager is a seven, but this, this investor is a nine. Like that's just, it just gets gross. Like just play the good, the, all the lineups are sick. Just play. Yeah. That's a really strange thing to be doing with lineups um, to be ranking people. And I'd be interested to, to hear what Garrett would have to say on this topic, because it feels a little bit high schooly where you're like, she's a six and he's, she's a seven and a half, but like, you know, it feels a little bit like that. And, I, and, I and, and also I was a 1.5. You're a one point. Nice. Not a one, a 1.5. By the way, after the other night, I think you might be a three. I'm just saying, I'm just bumping you up a little bit. I'll bump you I up mean, on the list. 3.5? <laughs> I'll bump you up on the list a little bit. Um, but also another dynamic to that is when you're running a game and if you're in Feldman's shoes, I think Feldman has done an incredible job building and growing the show. But what you have to do is very difficult and you have to watch walk this really thin line on trying to make sure the games are good enough, but you have big names. Mm-hmm. So it, it just seems a little bit sort of out of line to me for a player to be doing that and telling the the, the, game, the showrunner, essentially, the person that's going to make the show run, hey, you need these people or not these people and this is my ranking system for them. But I, I, and I know I said this before, but I, you still have to put some responsibility on Feldman because it is his show and he has the final say. And if you feel like someone is stepping over the line in a way that that's hurting you or hurting your, your product or, or is predatory towards your players, at some point you have to say something and do something. The thing is, I think for the longest time, Ryan didn't think that Garrett was hurting his product. And he probably didn't realize the impact it had on the players because people just like weren't speaking up to Ryan because in their head, Garrett is Ryan's like golden like ticket, you know, or whatever, like Garrett's the show. So I think a lot of the players probably, and like this holds true for me too, at the time felt like speaking up against Garrett was not a good idea because you're going to like basically like end your own opportunity to play or whatever. And I think like, this is like, the point isn't this. I, I'm not saying Ryan did everything right, but what I'm saying is, I think for Garrett, who supposedly was Ryan's friend and you know has gone so much from this person to then leverage him and like do all this stuff just in his own best interest is super gross. And I think like generally speaking, like his actions are just like gross and predatory. I mean, listen for the record. Like I like to say this since the Robbie thing happened, which like obviously you know. I was involved in, in some extent. I have not said a word about Garrett on stream. I've talked privately when I've been asked, but I don't proactively talk about him. When we were at, at the lodge, for example, it came up at the table. Was there cheating? Was there not? I, I didn't comment. I don't like to comment on this. I don't like to talk about him. It doesn't make me happy. It doesn't do anything. I don't know why yesterday he decided to say, you know, what he said, but I mean, I feel like if he's going to tell, tell, tell me I'm a bad person, like, I just want to like tell the facts so that people can judge on their own. I mean, one day my kids will see Garrett's write up where he says I'm a cheater and they'll see Garrett's tweet where they say, he says I'm a worse human being than I am player. Like fuck that guy. Like my kids will see that. Right. That, that bothers me. I mean, whether I should or shouldn't let it bother me is up for debate, but it bothers me. And so I just want to clear the air. I mean, I don't block people from the games. I don't like politic. I don't, like, I mean, <laughs> this, this is crazy. So one time when I was at work, I was at my office last year. And I get a phone call and it, the caller ID says Garrett Adelstein. And I'm like, I don't have his number. Like this can't, this is a prank, right? And this is like before I'm really playing with him, like maybe a couple times on a Wednesday. I pick it up and he's like, hey, Nick. And he just goes into a spiel about how he knows I'm blocking him from the Wednesday games and I'm trying to keep him out, blah, blah, blah. Dude, is, I'm this, out. is this is this post-Jack 4 or pre-Jack 4? Pre, pre, pre. Okay, okay. And so this is like when it all kind of started. I think this is when he started getting upset. He had this impression that like I was keeping him out of games or whatever, which is just not true. Like, it's it's been said on stream before by Ryan. Like I never asked lineups. You can ask your guy school Mike. Like I think I asked him like 
a week before after committing, like, hey, roughly, what's the lineup? So I get an idea of how big the game was going to play. Like, I just play. Like, I just show up and play. Yeah, you didn't. I you, I mean, you were great. Like, you, you, you just said you'd play, and you played. Yeah, I just – I show up. I come prepared with money. Like, I have money for myself. I have money to loan people if they need it. Like, I show up, like, covering everyone, and I try to make the stream entertaining. Like, to me, it's important to, like, give back. And, like, you know, whatever. The perception of me online is, you know, that I'm, like, a villain or whatever, and, you know, I play the heel or whatever you want to call it on the streams and mess around and have fun. But at the end of the day, like, people don't understand, like, the relationships. Like, me and Jungle are friends. Like, that's just the truth. We went out to dinner, like, a couple nights later. We talk – we text all the time. Like – me calling jungle a bitch at the table is he's a super pro and it's competitive and we're also fucking putting on a show like we're not yeah like, what do you want you want me to sit Agreed. there and sunglasses on and put a headphones on my across my shoulder and just wait for ace five suited to five bet or you want me to fucking get in there with ace deuce off and scream when i win like you it's a show right like that's yeah. what we're here for right i'm not here just to fucking you know like grind like that's not that and by the way i before. and by the way i think that is something that the younger generation as a whole doesn't really understand when you look at the the Helmus, the Negranus, the that generation, I mean, even the Mattisals, although it's obviously a little different with him, these guys got understood that this is a show and I need to be a personality. And if I want to be a big name, I need to be a personality. But the new generation, and a lot of it is because of Black Friday and because of the dynamics and because of how poker has changed and because of how good you have to be now to play online. But I feel like a lot of the younger generation, they don't really understand this and they, they, they're they quiet and they're really sharp and they're smart and, they're, and most of them are highly ethical. But <clears throat> they're not fun they're not fun to have on the show they can't build an audience they're not people that that you like to watch and i think that you've done a really nice job of being a younger player that has kind of built up their name as someone that's entertaining and it's just mm -hmm. i guess it's just good to see that there are people that are that are going that route i mean for me it's just like i kind of got into poker watching streams and like watching the streams i knew what i enjoyed watching and what i didn't and like you want entertainment um can i just a couple more things i want to talk, to talk about like with Garrett yeah stuff. Can, can we actually can I, can I bring this in hold that thought I just want to briefly, because I'm going to transition this over into the next topics for what we're talking about with when Garrett pulled you in, because that's when things I think really kind of went off the rails a little bit here. I'm just going to uh, share my screen uh, if I'm able to. Here we go. Okay. So then uh, after Garrett tweeted yesterday, talking about my video, someone just brought you up, go back and stack airball. And then he just kind of fired off the hip. I, I mean, I, I, I don't see this kind of stuff from Garrett very often. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened here, but he said PC Garrett has died. Airball is a bad poker player and a much worse human being. Fuck that guy. Can it's you explain? Strong. Can it, it's very strong, and it's and and I, it's also strong considering the person, right? And by the way, you can tell how strong this was because of the reaction from the community. Like for example, if like like me and you, we were going back. Like when you say you embrace the heel role, right? Yeah. You're like, I'm coming to lot. I'm gonna fucking buy your business or I'm gonna buy the room. I'd be like, all right, come fucking get some. you know, we went yeah. back and forth. It's but that fun. was like it was fun, right? It was in good, it was good in good humor. And I also love, by the way, when we were doing that, like we didn't even have to run it by each other. Like you said your oh. thing, I said my thing. We're, and I just see a clip of you talking shit and then I fire off some shit. Yeah, it's good. It's good because I know you get it. But, I just assume like if you don't get it, like I don't like know what to tell you. Like it's just I assume you get it. Everyone knows I'm in it for the views. <laughs> but anyway, this 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 comment from Garrett. What what prompted this? Do you have a history with Garrett? Is there some kind of backstory? Like what what happened here? I I, I don't I just don't understand. I mean, I personally I have my own opinion on what it is, which I think Garrett probably has this perception right now with the news coming out that like he's not invited or whatever from Ben. He probably thinks that like I have a say in that or I'm doing something to keep him banned or whatever, which is just like the furthest from the truth. I, I'm happy to play Garrett. I'll play him heads up. He won't play. Just, just a fact like people think online like Garrett will play anyone all this stuff like he won't like and I, I don't I just don't understand the tweet it's just bizarre like, it just seems like an emotional thing like it just is weird I personally like have gone on rants about Garrett when I was drunk on Joey's thing I tweeted what a bunch of crazy shit when I was drunk but it's always competitive like let's play poker like I want to be better than you that's I feel like sometimes people miss like what I'm doing when I'm doing it which is like it's a competition thing like the people I needle after the big pots, go look. It's the super pros or the people I have really good relationships with. Like, like last week or a couple weeks ago, like I got in against like Dentist Dave and he's just like dead or whatever. Like, I don't say a word because like that's not the person I'm needling. Like, it's just like the public misses these small things, but like that's the reality, which is like you in poker, like you can do certain things with certain players and can't do certain things with other players. And I think like um, it's important to to recognize that as a player and as a viewer.
And I also think like one other thing that's like kind of interesting about this whole thing is like, if you just look at the response online, like the people who know both of us come out saying that like, I'm a good person and like, what the heck are you talking about? And the people who don't know either of us come out saying like, oh, Garrett, you're the man. It's like the fans or whatever you want to call them, like the viewers, they don't know the full story and all the side interactions and everything. Like, I mean, I can tell a story. One time I was playing after stream, it was me, Garrett and two other recreational players. And uh, one of the recreational players was clearly uncomfortable to stakes. Like the game was supposed to be 25, 50, 100. We kicked up to 51 and like one, and then we were putting the two on and he was just uncomfortable. It's four handed game is good, whatever, you know, and uh, it's post stream and Garrett wants the 200 to be permanent. And so he, he, he says, you know, straddles on. Okay. Puts it down. And like, I can, I'm sitting next to the guy and I can tell like he's too uncomfortable to say no because of who Garrett is, but also like he doesn't want to, like, it's just obvious. Like it, it's obvious when someone doesn't want to straddle, it's not hard to tell, you know? So I said to him, I was like, you know, so-and-so do you want to straddle on? He was like, I'd prefer not to. And Garrett, you know, goes, okay, picks it up. Right. Two minutes later, the dealer change comes and Garrett just says, racks, I'm done. And the guy's like, okay, Garrett, like I'll play one, two. Can we just not ante? And Garrett just goes on a tirade. Like, I'm not fucking here to negotiate with you. I'm already fucking like doing what you want by playing smaller. Like this is micro sticks. And he just like goes off on a rant at the guy. And like, it's a recreational player, like a losing player. Like, what are you doing, dude? Like, shut the fuck up. And if the guy wants to play 51, it doesn't matter. The, the people also don't understand this. Like, the stakes you play don't matter. I guarantee you if this Friday we played 5-5 five, five, and we all buy in half a million, the game's going to play just as big as it played last Friday. It just – because in these lineups, people aren't thinking, like, the blinds. They're just fucking opening and blasting off. Like, that's what I'm doing. Like, I'm not thinking, like, oh, the 800's on. I should open to 2.3x. I'm just fucking grabbing a couple chips and throwing them out there and, like, let's fucking fire, you know? And so – to be honest, in these games, like the straddle stuff doesn't even matter, probably. Yes, I, I, and games can really play like that, and the blinds end up mattering a lot more than um, than the blinds do in most cases. But so he he talked to a recreational player with that exact tone. Yeah, and those exact words. It was, it was the most uncomfortable thing I've been around. <laughs> I mean, like also like here's something else people will love. Like when the stream ends, I've played post stream with Garrett maybe like. I mean, probably every time we play, right? So, like, I don't know how many times I've played with him on stream, but every time we play, I think we play a little bit post stream. I think every time except for one, he snap puts headphones in. Just like snap puts headphones in. It's just like the moment the stream ends, he just turns into like who he is. Like, he's just a grinder. And like, when Garrett says in his tweet, PC Garrett has died, I feel like it just means fake Garrett has died. And like, people are just seeing like his true side. Like, he's just like a lot nastier and whatever than people realize. And it's just, it is what it is, but it's the truth. Well, it's definitely good to see people be authentic, right? Like, I mean, when I saw that tweet, it, it it's it's fun to see that kind of stuff, right? To see someone just kind of cut loose like that and sure. say something that's, that that's going to cause ripples in that way. But there's also a line, you know, like I think I think you know, saying "fuck Nick Airball," like he sucks at poker, is Fine. but then as a person, as a as a person part, is just really what what I don't understand. Like, are you saying there's no backstory? to why he said as a person like there's no like because that almost hints that there that there's something that happened you know what i'm saying because otherwise I mean, why would you say that i would love to know like i asked like 100 people yesterday like, do you know why what's going on like is i i thought maybe he had like a deal with another stream to start streaming next week and he wants to make his name big again or something i don't know it's it's the most bizarre thing garrett doesn't know me personally like we just like don't have like a close relationship or even like a relationship beyond just like we played, you know? And like, if anything, like I always thought it was like a competitive relationship, if anything, you know, like I think he, I mean, I didn't come to hustler to replace Garrett. I came to beat Garrett. Does that make sense? Kind of like, I have no interest personally in like playing in like, manicured lineups against like people who have no idea like i just want to play like i just don't care you know like and part of playing is like i would like to play in really good games i'm not gonna lie i would also like to play against really good players who like i loved watching growing up like when i got to play against you i got to play against art i've gotten to play against phil rob young all my like these guys who like i watched growing up garrett obviously andy obviously like these are people who like got me into poker so like for me like when i was in college or whatever like watching garrett 3x shove the river and like put someone just in the fucking cage. Like I was like, damn, I want to put him in the cage. I want to be there in the cage against him. Like I want to see if I can like handle the pressure, make the decision. Like I just want to fucking battle. Like that's why when I say like, I'll play anyone. And then people are like, Oh, we only play on stream. Well, yeah, I only play on stream. Cause like 
I mean, like, what do you want me to do? You want me to fly to your fucking grimy casino and play you heads up or whatever? If someone wants to play heads up, 500, 500 came in, all your own action. We can play off stream at Hustler anytime. I'm not going to travel for you, for all you bums. I'm not going to do all this shit. I feel personally attacked right now, Nick. Okay, uh, and, and, and I, 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 I heard I heard your, your challenge. And uh, if you ever wanted to make it 200K, I'll put it all myself. But no, 500K... I'm just not rich enough, Nick. I'm okay, willing to accept fine. that. I, I, I can, I, 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 I just can't do it. Five hundred K is too rich for my blood. I'll tell everyone this: I have no shot against the Doug Polks, the Jungle Mans, the Button Clickers, the Sean Deebs of the world. If they have two hundred big blinds, and I wouldn't put Deeb on that list. Okay, whatever. I don't know all these, <laughs> all these guys who like talk shit and say they want to play or whatever. Like, I have no shot on a hundred big blinds, two hundred big blinds format because I have no patience. And like, if you sell action and I'm playing 500, 1,000, I'm not saying you, but it's they, and they're playing 100, sure. 200, I just, it's not the same. Sure. But if they have all their own action and they're sweating when I put them to the test and it's their 5% of their net worth or 50% of their net worth, it's a different game. And that's when I- I mean, if, if, if you're playing with 50% play. of your net worth on the line, they're, they're, you're going to get fucking steamrolled okay, because there's just no like, way. There's just no way. Anyone overexposed, I will steamroll, right? And yeah. so- I think it's pretty reasonable for me to say, like, listen, my threshold for being interested to play heads up has to be a lot of money. Sure. And I also, like, I don't think I have a shot playing, like, heads up 100 big blinds. And I also don't think that's very interesting. Like, I don't mean this to be, like, rude, but, like, I think heads up poker is pretty boring unless you have the right circumstances, which is, like, you need to have either two players who are just, like, super willing to go to war or you need to be super deep and, like, the money has to be capable of going in. I mean, what, what's what's different about heads up is that you have to play every hand and you have to battle. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I actually, I, in, in my opinion, obviously we'll disagree on this, but heads up is the best form of poker from a purely getting to play poker standpoint. Because in ring, if you start punting, it can get real, real bad, sure. right? And you have to have discipline preflop. Whereas in heads up, if you fold next hand, let's go. Like you, you just so right back in it. What I mean by like heads up is like fun is I mean like playing the game. So for me, like I'm going to play a lot of hands, especially when we're playing heads up and probably just gonna play every hand, right? And I don't, I think like, historically playing heads up i won the most money playing against tight players because like i just win all the pots and that like adds up right like right. sure they win one pot every 10 but like i win nine but those games where like, i think my win rate's like the highest and i won the most are like literally the least interesting to me like i've quit heads up matches that are like that because i just get bored i'm like this is not yeah interesting. you're just like, grinding at that point yeah basically. like I, I just don't care about winning your 1.8 big blinds every hand like and then like you know, it's just boring. Like I'm going to open seven deuce and just blind bet the flop, blind bet the turn. You're going to fold. Like it just gets boring, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, what makes heads up interesting is when someone wants to come battle with me, you know, like a couple of weeks ago, I played me and Ben played heads up post stream, like for a few hours. It was fucking fun. Like sitting like infinite deep battling, you know, like playing hands. And that's what makes heads up interesting. So when I, when I say like, I'm interested, I'll play anyone heads up. I only want to play. Yeah. Under my, the circumstances I'm saying, which people might say like, Oh, well, it's not really like an open challenge. Okay. It's fine. It's not, but I'm just saying like, you want to play with me heads up. I'm not interested in smaller stakes. I'm interested in big stakes. I'm interested in you having your own action. And for the record, the offer extends to Garrett. We can play anytime, big boy. Like that's, that's <laughs> you heard right here, guys. Open challenge, Nick Airball versus Garrett, 500k buy and 501k stakes. I, I, I'll take the under, but uh, I, I think having that challenge open is incredible, and uh, I, I hope to see it. Even if it if it wasn't at our well, room, if it was a hustler, that would be awesome. He'll literally never play. It, it's just the opposite of Garrett's MO. Like it's kind of, to be honest, like it's kind of almost disingenuous for me to offer to play him because I know it's a free roll. I'll like, tell you what, though, Nick, I challenged Leon Grand to a heads-up match, knowing he would say no. And sometimes you don't know what you're going to get. I'm just saying. It's how not, did that not work out? Uh, we played poker, and I, I believe I won. I'd have to check the the, the well, logs. Similar to you and Daniel Negreanu, he. I don't think he's going to play. And if he plays, I, I think we'll play some poker. Incredible. I hope. I hope that match happens. Can I so, say a couple of things that I want to like think go for it, Yeah, that's... go for it, please. So like, you know, this whole thing with Robbie and, you know, the Jack Four stuff, I think it's kind of, it's obviously like split the community in a lot of ways and people still debate whether or not she cheated or not. And I, I think it's kind of irrelevant at this point. I think it's important that people kind of see it this way. At this point, like there's no proof she cheated. I think it's just unethical to continue to say she's a cheater. I think it's unfair to her. And like, it just gets to a point where it's like, you can't like in, in the real world, like I can't just be like, Doug, Doug's a murderer. And then you say, prove it. And I say, I don't have any proof, but Doug's a murderer. That doesn't work, right? So it's the same thing in poker. And like Garrett, this is not the first time Garrett's accused someone of cheating on stream and asked for a refund. 
Like that's people don't know that. But like last year, Shane Kirk came to Hustler Casino Live with a couple of his friends. They played like a couple of days. They lost several hundred thousand. Afterwards, Garrett texts Shane and says, you guys were colluding against me and asked him for like a 3K refund. Like it's not the first time this guy's literally like tried to get a refund from losses on a stream or whatever, for, like when he's upset, he lost. Like, I don't know. And like, or other stuff like Garrett went on your podcast years ago and talked about how he's been cheated before. And like, there was a cheating ring and he never, he's not going to out the name because then there's a chance he gets paid or whatever. Okay. Like you talk about how your character is so like high and mighty, but like at the end of the day, it's not, it's your, you care about your bottom line. And like, he's trying to put on a facade to the world, but that's just not the reality. Like the reality is like, he's selfish and cares about himself and his bottom line, which is fine. Like just own it. Like to me, like the thing that tilts me with Garrett is just like the fakeness. Like, for what I pride myself on, regardless of like what people think of me, is I feel like I'm very real. Like last Friday, I was just fucking on one. I'm on tilt, I torched 750,000. Like people always like make fun of me online. Like, oh, when Nick's winning, he's so happy. When he's losing, he's so sad. Yeah, I'm fucking human. Like, what do you want from me? You want me to be like jumping up and down when I'm losing? Like, I fucking hate losing. Like, of course I'm going to be on tilt. Like, what do you want? You know, like I just think like I just try to be real. You know what I mean? And like people are like, oh, maybe the people say like, well, you're being fake because you're being a heel. But dude, it's just like having fun. Like to me, it's like I think like, I just try to be real and be who I am. And like, what drives me nuts about Gary is I feel like he just try, like he's just fake. And like, I don't know. It just kind of sucks. Like it, it's like, you know how they say you never meet your idols. Like that shit's true. Like just never. It's definitely meet your true. Idols. Not, not just, true. not just with Gary, but other poker players as well that it will always let you down. Yeah. But in, in anything is true. So I wanted to just talk about Garrett and, and I's relationship for a moment here, because I feel like because during the saga, I said, I thought Robbie cheated. It turned into Doug and Garrett are like best friends. They're hanging out. They like they like go on dates on the weekends. There's like pictures of me and him and Brokeback Mountain, and we're like on the same horse. And I'm just like, the fuck yeah. is this? So first off, I don't. I have to double check. I don't think I've ever hung out with Garrett uh, off the poker table. I, I, if you want to call it hanging out, I don't think I. I don't think I ever have once. And then I also have only played poker with Garrett. I don't actually know. Have I played poker with Garrett? I'm sure at the bike at some point I played at poker bike, with him a I couple times. Let's, say, let's yeah. say a couple of times. So maybe I hung out with him once or zero times off stream and a few times on stream. I know Garrett from two plus two and the days and back in the day where he had a really good reputation and I knew him as someone that played a lot of people online and I knew that a lot of people respected him and I've had a lot of communication with Garrett and he's always been super professional and nice with me. So from my perspective, Garrett is an upstanding person. He has done and said the right things. He is kind. He he is. He, we have a good relationship, right? But I am not friends with Garrett. I, it's not like we hang out, you know. I, I I don't know why there's this like sort of like this this idea that that's the case. Yeah, anyway, I, I mean, sure. people online just have no clue. The stuff with Garrett's so funny. It's like I feel like people who are around him a lot more. Like I mean, I really don't know Garrett, but like I've just been around him and like the shit he's doing for like enough time to like have had it all kind of perforate to me. You know what I mean? Like and. It just is like, like, <laughs> I think it's, it's disingenuous the way he acts. And I think that people misconstrue like a lot of the, the things he says. And at the end of the day, like I would expect Garrett to always be on his best behavior with you. I would expect Garrett to always be on his best behavior with Phil Helmuth. I expect him to be with anyone who he thinks like adds value to him in some way. He's going to always be on his best behavior with at least to their face. I mean, like, it's just funny. Like Garrett, you know, threatens Ryan and says like, I'm going to go play live with the bike. But then he also talks shit to Ryan about live with the bike and how he doesn't trust Houston Curtis. He thinks he's like, you know, might be doing some things cheating and like, he doesn't trust Wayne and all these other guys. Like I bet these guys just don't know. Like Garrett's just talking mad shit about them behind their back. <laughs> like how he doesn't trust them. But then he's like, plays their stream because he's desperate to play or whatever. Right. So like, there's just like stuff like that, where it's just, it, it's just like, gets it gets to the point where there's just so many of these instances that people are just tired of it. I have a theory here, by the way, and I'm going to, I'm going to do some speculation with no inside knowledge at all. Just purely shooting off the cuff here. I feel like when Garrett said, I am going to be playing on stream soon or something in that one tweet, I feel like there is a Garrett live at the bike partnership ish thing in the works. It feels like that to me. What do you, what do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, I, the way I see it is like this. So obviously he's not coming back to hustler. As of now, like he's not going to be playing at the lodge. I don't think he's going to travel to play. Um, I also like no offense to you guys. I genuinely don't think he would play any of the games you guys have put on. Um, Fair, yeah. I, I don't mean that rudely at all. It just no, it's fine. No worries. It's just how I feel. Like I, that's my opinion. 
like the game the day before I came, like Robbie and Bill Perkins played. I still don't think he would play that lineup with like Ben Lamb and you know the the, the couple other guys in there. Like he just wouldn't play. So I mean, I I, I well, I mean, I don't want to get into our lineup specifically. I I would hope Garrett would play in that game. But if not, then he certainly isn't going to like our other games. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> okay, so maybe you play the best game you ever put on. But either way, okay, so yeah, sure. We can agree he's probably not playing at the lodge or hustler anytime soon. So I mean, the only place left is the bike, and we all know the bike has been af- is after Garrett. It, you know, that's the bike is struggling, and do they see Garrett as like a lifeline? I, I think my my expectation is this: I don't think Garrett will be playing on live at the bike anytime soon. He's his his child's about his wife's about to give birth to his first child and everything, and I, I think Garrett's very focused on that as he should be. I think that likely when bike shut like so live with the bike shutting down obviously and then they're gonna relaunch probably at commerce or whatever. I think and, they're uh, they're doing a Tropicana in yeah, Vegas. And, and then, then eventually commerce probably. They, they didn't they didn't confirm or deny the the commerce thing, but usually when someone leaks a rumor and then the source doesn't confirm or deny, it's usually a pretty good indicator yeah. it's happening. So, but yeah, I don't know. My guess is that Garrett probably has an agreement with them to uh like basically just be the face of the show when they come out, which is you know, good. Like I I'm interested to see what kind of games they can get. I, I think uh I think he's gonna realize that the problem really isn't what he thinks, it's actually with himself, you know, like, you just can't <laughs> there's a reason like I get to play every week and it's not because like I'm a huge fish it's because players like me and like I do the right things and I think that's important like you have to do the right things in poker I mean look at like a guy like Mariano right a year ago playing much smaller all of a sudden now he's playing big and he's on stream every week right what's the difference between now and a year ago if you look at the streams when you play now or where he plays a year ago he just got it like somewhere some on the way he picked he picked it up like he figured it out you need to give action you need to talk like you need to like try to do more to be good for the stream and like i'm not saying he's like super action i think but like you can tell like he's making an effort like you can tell at the very least he's making an effort to give back to the game and like that's just like what matters it's not well, a- I, I i would push back a little on that so i think with guys like mariano and Gar- garrett's sort of in this vein but it is different Mariano has been building his brand, right? Like he has a YouTube channel, he has a vlog, he has a popular vlog. And so I think when you look at people that have an audience that want to watch them, they just get more leeway, right? Yeah, and and sure. Mar- Mariano fires. Like I covered a hand actually on my channel the other day where he just like fought what, the pair versus double M. Yeah, double M. Yeah, I talked to double M, double M about the hand too. But anyway, so basically like he, he'll, he'll fire for sure. But, yeah. but he also gets more leeway because the guy has an audience. Like he's come out to our room a bunch. When he plays, people will watch. He's, mm-hmm. he's going to share in content. Like he's a good person and, to have on your stream. And despite that, he chooses to go out of his way to make to be good for the game. That's my yeah. point. Like, yeah, he's someone who like he doesn't need to do all the stuff he does. He could probably still play it mostly every week and like not do the stuff. But by doing the stuff he does, he's ingratiated himself with the players, the staff, the production, and the viewers by making the the games more fun for the players, making the production easier for the staff you know, making the show more enjoyable, more viewers. Like these are things that you don't have to do these things. Like that's the point. The point is like, I guess my big point to people is like, it's not about what you have to do. Like it's about what you choose to do beyond what you need to do. That makes you like giving or not giving or a knit or not a knit. Like when I say a knit, I don't mean like play tight. Like I, I it couldn't really, to be honest, I couldn't care if you play tight. Like if I played a game with all the tight players, I'm actually quite, quite fine with it. It's much easier, right? But I, what I don't like is when people are just like nitty with their behavior and like right. that seems like all about themselves, you know, and like that just drives me up the wall because I just just can't stand it. I, I've played on a lot of streams at this point in my life. I've played on all the big US streams. I've played on I played in Crown when they did something back there in the day. I, I've played on Poker in America when they were doing worse. I've played on all the big streams basically. And I think something that doesn't get talked about at all, but that's a really important factor is what is the vibe going into the game? right because some games you show up and everyone's staring and tanking and quiet and it's just like this is going to be a nightmare yeah and then some games you show up and there's shit talking and people are having fun someone's already cracking open a beer someone else is like getting the wine like two guys are like choking about some shit and then like you you start dealing the hand and, and there's already laughter and stuff i cannot tell you how much better the game will be in that second scenario because you have this like you like break the ice sort of when you mm-hmm. have that really tense stare down stuff, and I played on this when I played with like a lot of the bigger name guys, like Antonius, Ivy, like some of the classic big name guys, it's intense with those guys, you know. Yeah. And it, it, with some of the younger pro guys, it's intense too. When you have that that environment where it's people are, are having fun and enjoying just being there and being a part of the show, the game is substantially better. And I think so, something that that shows should should, should try, try to strive towards. 
Yeah, I think like it's also like it's a big difference, and this is probably like relevant because like of experience. Like viewers play like this is not meant to be like a shot at them, but like they play much smaller stakes on average. You know, one two bang five, bang. Seven. And um, I think those games, like the ecosystem in those games, is much different, right? Like you can just show up at the casino and jump into a five five game, and there's a mixture of like winning players and losing players in the game, right? And you can just play and like play for a living or whatever, right? But when you come, you can't just like jump in a high stakes game and like it's just not just running. Like the high high stakes games are built, or like so basically in high stakes, like the every common day man can't just show up and lose 100k, right? Only certain people, special people, rich people can do that. So the games are built around the guys who are capable of handling those financial losses, and so because of that, you just like have to cater to them. And like it maybe like that also sounds predatory, but I to me it's not like predatory. It's just like this is like a service like almost if that makes sense like for example like i'm friends with like you know almost all the players on hustler the whales the recreationals whatever right it's not like it's a secret that like i'm trying to win their money right it's not like a secret but at the same time like they appreciate the small things you do for them like i get it all in against a recreational player they can always pick how many times we run it always doesn't matter like last friday i'm down 600k I get it all in against Dentist Dave for 40,000. Total pot. It's like 45,000. You think I want to run it twice, Doug? I'm going to say no. Yeah, there's three. I'm saying you'd, you'd rather get a root canal. Yeah, the three K in the pot, I call up 20,000 with second pair on the turn because he just shoves. I, I don't give a fuck. I'm stuck, you know, half a million, three quarters of a million. He's, I say, Dave, whatever you want. He says twice. It's a $40,000 pot. Trust me, in that moment, all I wanted to fucking do was put more money in the pot and run it once despite being behind. Like that's all I wanted to do because I want the pot to be bigger and I want to run it once. But of course, Dave, twice, no problem. And I'm stuck 600,000. Like these are the small things that people online should don't realize are really important in these games. Like you just can't, it can't just be about me and my EV. Like it, it just can't. And like the games only work and the ecosystem only exists if the winning players are good for the game. If winning yeah. players are bad for the game, you're never going to have a healthy ecosystem. And you're never going to have a good game. And that's the truth because, like, if you look at guys, like, and this is just the truth. Like, if you look at Alan Keating, for example, right? Super action on the streams, right? He's probably winning in his games. Let's just be honest. Like, he's probably winning in his games, right? He hosts games. He's probably winning in the games. In fact, I know he's winning in the games. But he's also amazing for the games, right? And that's what makes those games so good is he's good for the game but he's a winning player. So when the winning players give to the game and give back and make it fun, that's how you make the best games possible. And I feel like for the longest time, Garrett got that until he felt like he no longer needed to make the game as good as possible. He could just demand what he wanted. And I think like, it's just like, like to me, for example, this is kind of a funny thing. So like when you came and played a hustler, right? I, I don't know you. I, I, I just, uh, you know, I've watched you online for years and have my own impression. Right. You come and play. I think the very first time you're under the gun, you just put the straddle on. And you didn't say anything. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, hmm, that's weird. I've never seen the Super Pro do that. Like, because <laughs> And then, like, the next orbit around, like, someone puts the four, and I see you put the eight. And I was like, huh, he just put the eight on. And I was like, damn, like, this guy gets it. Like, he, he's willing to put the, the straddle on. Like, he knows he's in a good game. He knows he's a favorite. He knows it's good for TV. He knows that maybe everyone doesn't want to straddle. And it's not a big fucking deal. Just put the straddle on. In fact, it's. I still think it's plus EV to put the straddle on in these games. Like all the math nerds are going to send me shit on DMS on Twitter, but like, it's not about just putting the straddle on. It's about everything else. Like, you know, on Friday, I'm putting the 800 on all the time. I'm tilted. Right. Well, Bill Klein then puts it on all the time. And then he puts the 1600 on for me and Stanley Choi. And like, they, they, you know, it, you create an environment that makes people feel comfortable. My favorite stories. I don't think this is a big deal to say. So I played a bunch of Fridays at Hustler. And before a lot of the games, specifically Bill is like, I don't want the straddles to go crazy. Okay. Every Friday. And he tells me, he's like, Nick, I'm just going to like, I tell you that. And then he's like, you're in charge. I'm like, okay. So usually we agree to like, you know, we start with like one, one orbit or one orbit, every dealer change. And no joke, every fucking Friday that Bill says this, he is put on a $3,200 straddle every Friday. And it's just crazy. Like every Friday he does that. And it's just like, it just shows like how sick, um, you know, all this, uh, sorry, I got a phone call directly, but it just shows like, it's not about what you make people do. It's about how you make them feel and how you comfortably make them feel. And like Bill feels protected in the game because he is, because I'm not there trying to like steal every, or steal, but like take every dollar from him, you know? Right. I'm there to win. 
I'm there to also make sure like we all have a fuckload of fun. Like that's really important to me. So there, there are two things on that. So first off, there's always this elephant in the room with poker. Mm -hmm. Everyone there is trying to win everyone else's money, right? And it's the elephant in the room and we all know it. And so I think like with good players, bad players, recreational players, pros, everywhere in between, mm -hmm. because we all know that, it's not viewed in a negative way because in the same way I want to win, you want to win, he wants to win, everyone wants to win. It's not like, oh, I want to win your money because I don't like you. It's we are here to try and win money. That's the game that we play. And so it's, it's kind of it's kind of like it's like it's like almost like the, these like them be the rules here, you know? Like that's it. Yeah. Like that's what it is. Um, and and then second off, as far as environment goes, like, and and it's a little bit more now because I, I do more content and I, I I know people laugh when I say this, but I don't really view myself as a pro because I make my money from all kinds of things. I'm not like right. a pro pro. I'm good at poker for sure, yeah. I, I, for sure. But when they say pro, they just mean winning player. Yeah, sure. So, but what, whatever it is, like especially now, it's like. My job, if I go on a show, it's to make the show fun and make sure that the people have a good time and I can make connections with people and the viewers like the show and I represent my brands well. And like, I'm not here to make sure that my cutoff range is optimal. That is not what I'm doing. So I, mean, I go I plan am. a sh yeah, yeah, I'm sure you are, Nick. Well, let me send you some new ranges, buddy. Head on over to upsingpoker.com. <laughs> you need some help, stat. <laughs> I was looking at some ranges and I had some green paint. And I just spilled the whole can on top of the paper. You're like, Doug, is this right? And there's just like paint splattered on it. I'm like, no, that's not right. <laughs> but no, I think like what you're saying is like really important. And like, you know, the best, the best way to make a game good is by being good for the game. And like the best way to make money in poker and the way to make the most money in poker is to play in the best games and make the games, the best games even better. And like, it's just easy. Like if someone out there is wa watching this and they're playing five, five, you can play hundred, 200 in a year. Just do all the right things at five, five, beat the game, make the games good. People want to play with you. It's not hard to win. Like it's just, people aren't willing to like sacrifice direct EV or whatever in order to win in the long term. Like, well, you have to be you know, good though. That, fucking, that, that, that... That's a pretty big part money, of it. Like, it's a lot of the time, like, I, I just don't think it's that bad. Like, when I just blast off with 10-4 off or whatever, like, I just don't think it's bad. Like, I actually think these plays are all plus EV, just not in a vacuum. Well, so you have to be good, though, to, to do this. Like, if you're yeah, not good, you're not going to be able to. And and kind of by definition, most people aren't good or else, you know, right. it would just be average. So when you're, when you're an elite player or you're someone that's a very capable player and you have your own style, like, you have a style. Your style is buy in super deep, apply pressure, put people in really uncomfortable spots and make people crumble under that pressure. Right. And maybe they pass, maybe they don't, but you, but that's your style. And mm -hmm. so that style, you can't do it five, five. You can't buy in for piles in a five, five game. There's caps and stuff. Right. So it kind of depends on how good you are and what your style is like. I mean, that's true, but uh, I mean, I played five, 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 10, 10, 20, 10, 25 capped games. Like I've played these games, I've beaten the games, I've lost in the games. Like you can always find a way to beat games. Like it's not, I think you can always beat a game and be good for the game. And also like what I always like for me personally, like this probably just doesn't sound like ludicrously like, I guess just like self-righteous or something, but like, I guess I've never really played in public games, but it's not like I showed up in LA and I knew everyone. I just showed up in LA, went to a public game, made the game good and was immediately pulled into a private game. Like the way I met Ryan Feldman, for example, is this, we were playing five, five. So I get to the or to the bike. This is years ago. I was in college. And uh, there's a 5-5 five, five game running. So I go to get a seat in the game. And the game's boring. And so I convince everyone to be half PLO, half no limit. By the end of the night, it's like 8 in the morning. I'm falling out of my chair multiple times drunk. I'm stuck like 20,000 and we're playing 40-80 PLO. And like everyone else is winning. <laughs> like, you know, like it's not a big loss for the game. But it's just like that's how like you, you like – I mean, I'm not saying like – I'm not saying I went in there trying to torch money. But like I was just like trying to make the game better. And I happen to get caught in the crossfire. That's fine. But like – you show that you be good for the game. Like, you know, like to me, it's always funny. Like I, for example, like I'm sure you've had this experience. Like I'm sure you've been playing with like a recreational player and they win like a big pot and they kind of say something or they tank a long time, make a decision. They kind of like apologize for like trying so hard or whatever. I get this all the time because I feel like right now, like, especially like around these streams, like there's this whole thing where it's like, you have to be bad to play on the stream, right? Like you have to be a bad player to play on the stream. And I think like, you know, sometimes these recreational players, they feel like they sh they're not allowed to try that hard. And it's like, to me, I always tell them like, it's the opposite. Like try your hardest, like try to win, try to beat me. You know what I mean? Because inherently they have a disadvantage. Like, it's just true. Like if you have a business that you run seven days a week and one day of the week, you come play hundred, 200, like you're just at a huge disadvantage. 
for sure. It's just fact, you know, compared to the person who's just like sleeps in, wakes up, like thinks about poker all the time, comes to play, like that that person just has a big edge on you, right? And so if you want to think a long time and try your hardest, you fucking should. And at the same way, if you're a pro and you're winning in the game and you want to think a long time and try your hardest, you fucking shouldn't because that's how you're going to get yourself out of the game. Try less yeah. hard. Like, I, take I think, less time. I think for Rex, I, and this isn't a part of all of them, but for most of them, I think most of them are, are, are fine if they need to take their time for a decision. But I, I think what the, mo- the thing I've seen the most common, I would say, is players that don't want to feel like they did something stupid, like especially mm-hmm. on a show. It's like you, you, you play a huge pot and you lose or you get stacked or whatever it is. And you don't want to seem like you, you did something dumb because it's one thing to lose. Like they're willing to take that risk. But then if people think that they did something stupid to lose the money, then that kind of hurts more. That's I mean, the thing I mainly hurt. I see with Rex, I think. That's that's why like at Hustler, we always all talk about how the games are way better after the stream. And like everyone's like just wishes they could capture that we could capture. Why is that, man? I, I, I it's the every time the players feel comfortable punting off stream. If you own a business that's publicly traded and you have 10,000 employees who might be watching and you have ace three offsuit and go all in pre-flop, like and torch five hundred thousand or whatever, and your employees make 50k a year, like you're going to have some social pressure from your job. You're going to feel some type of way. Whether or not it's a real thing, you're going to feel some type of way. You know your employee. You, you know like these people are watching, right? And right. so these these guys are extremely, extremely successful, extremely smart, extremely sharp businessmen who are extremely in control of themselves. And they choose to give the action they give. And on stream, people like you, you know, it's just funny. Like, people think like the businessmen are dumb. It's like they're actually just way smarter. Like on stream, they don't want to appear dumb they, they they have businesses this is a recreational thing like it would be like you know i, I can't really find a comparison but it's it just like you know they don't want to look dumb there and they don't want to like embarrass themselves and there's also like other social pressures when the stream ends they want to fucking play like how they want to play and that's right the exactly the same because they're just willing to play hands i mean the hands i play against on friday post stream versus on stream like last friday's hands were just like hands that happen all the time after the stream like i swear on my life it's just i happen to happen on the stream because i was on one but like insane show that happens all the time because off stream people are willing to play and like feel comfortable and it's because of judgment stuff i mean like you know there's this website like whatever that tracks the results right that shit is so bad for the game because it's not like it's not like the losing players well a like some of them don't know i'm not sure about that by the way i'm not sure about that let me tell you why it's not necessarily about the losing players knowing how much they're losing that's not the problem it's the social ramifications of people seeing that they're losing. So like, if you go look at like the top 10 losers on Hustler, most of them don't play anymore on the stream regularly. A lot of them were regulars. And the reason they don't play is because they got tired of being said, of people online saying, this guy's an idiot. This guy sucks. This guy's this, this guy's that. And these guys are like, I have family, I have businesses. I have this, I have that. I, I just don't want to deal with this online. You know what I mean? So they leave. And the only reason people say this shit is because they look up and they say, oh, you're down 1 million, you're down 700,000, you're an idiot, you know? And so in these ways, that stuff is just, to me, it's just black and white bad for the game because it, it, it it's it, it's not necessarily about people knowing how much they're winning or losing. It's about, it furthers like comments from the social medias and stuff, which affects these recreational yeah, players. But, care. Okay, that's true. But uh, there are a few other things to talk about with that. So first off, when you lose a bunch on the stream with no tracking site, you still have a big loss. That's still a huge story. Everyone's going to talk about it. People are going to like talk about that thing anyway. So you're not getting rid of that. And then second off, it creates these narratives of who's on the stream, how are they doing, what's their story. And that's really good for viewers to have a story of the players. It creates the story and it, it it's compelling viewership. Okay. And then it's also this way to constantly make the show relevant. So sure. I agree. It's, it's bad when there are people that are down a bunch and getting attacked. Obviously bad. But it does help create create a storyline that people can follow and it i i, I can see arguments both ways i, I agree it's good for the show i think it's bad for the game okay that's fair which is, that's and this is what this all comes down to like i think this is what the, this is the disconnect that people have ryan is a game runner right but he also has to run the show and at the at the end of the day like running a game and running the show you don't always have aligned interest i mean like going back to like True. garrett kind of like leveraging ryan all this stuff like i mean nick and ryan fought about Garrett all the time. This is like a, just like a known thing in our player pool. Like, you know, Ryan makes the lineups and does stuff. Garrett's pulling all this shit. And Nick's like, dude, like we can't let this happen. But at the end of the day, like you're a partnership. There's a lot of dynamics and all this stuff kind of happens. And it's, it's just not black and white and it's not simple. And that's why like my frustration with this, like 
I think it's easy to say like, man, Nick and Ryan should have controlled Garrett better or whatever, right? But like, that's just like so idealistic and it doesn't take into account like the relationships and like, just like the real world. To me, it's like, what frustrates me is it's like, I'm like, Garrett as a winning player who's won the most from these games, gets the most out of these games and has gotten so much from Nick and Ryan should work with them, not against them and should work in everyone's best interest, not his own. I mean, the, the, the reality is like, it's just like, let's just say Garrett and this Robbie hand happens, right? And Garrett feels he got cheated, which totally justified. I would feel cheated. Gets up, walks away from the table, quits the game, right? And that's it. And then talks to Ryan privately. And privately, they have they have they do all this privately, right? He can play the he can be playing right now. He can be win another million, another two million, another five million. You know, like you you, you don't know, but by choosing to act in his own self interest in every moment, like he costs himself a lot of money. You know. When all this stuff with Robbie happened, Garrett essentially like caused a huge problem for Hustler. It's just the truth. You know, like it, it caused a lot of it's not just him coming out and saying the tweet he put out that night that was like six notes. It's like when he follows up with the 80 page manifesto on two plus two and you know redoubles down a million times that he causes all these problems, right? That's like pretty like shitty. Like uh, beyond just like how much money Garrett's made from them, like we're all supposed to be friends, you know, like Gar I, I know for a fact that despite Nick's frustration with Garrett or Ryan's frustration with Garrett, like they all considered Garrett their friend. And like, yeah, but if you thought you got cheated though, right? What? If you thought you got cheated, sure, you're going to be pretty upset and you're going to try and put forward what you think happened to, to air your grievances. You're going to do that. If you think you got cheated. I think that's true. And that's why I think it's fine for him to tweet, you know, that night, his response. But I also think like, as a winning player who's taken a lot from this specific spot, you can't just make an accusation then with no proof continue to triple quadruple down on it. You know, like, I think it's totally fair for Garrett to say like, I feel like I got cheated. And then, you know, there, oh. there's an investigation. And then that's kind of, that's the point. Like if, for example, like the way I see is this, right? If I was playing like in a private game, right? And I thought I got cheated, but I didn't know for sure. Like, let's just say I had a bad feeling, right? Or a weird hand happened. The first thing I would probably do is, is probably talk to whoever brought me to the game and then talk to the game runner. I wouldn't just stand up at the table and start screaming, you cheated, you cheated. I've actually been in a game where that happened, where like there was a crazy hand, like a 400K pot, a player stood up and snap said, there's cheating in this game and left. And then the guy who won the 400K pots proceeded to dust 400K in the next 20 minutes because he's a terrible player. And so, like, I, I've been on that side where someone thinks that they're so wrong, you know? And, like, I think it's interesting. Like, so beyond all the social interactions that happened around that hand, I don't really think the hand's that relevant. Like, I just don't think the hand is that relevant. I've seen crazier hands for more money. Like, it's, Oh, man. It's, I'm gonna have to disagree on that. Okay, but Doug, I mean that hand is that hand is in its own. Can we agree? On, think, have you ever played in a game, Doug, where someone straddles fifty thousand every hand? No. Okay, I played in that game a million times. Have you ever played in a game where you know the, we we play the game until someone loses a million? That's the, when the game ends. We just play infinite time, and the stop the stop on the game is when someone loses a million. No, I've I've not played that's, in games. That's like my that. that's one of my regular games. So like. In these games, you see shit for this kind of money all the time. And like, yeah, but dude, we're talking about we're talking about bet raise jam call with I, I, Jack Four. I don't. Uh, care. This is this is I, dude. This is the most insane hand ever. I, 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 I look, you could you could say it's not cheating. That's fine. I don't mm -hmm. think we know. We'll never know, right? People yeah. have their two sides. I probably lean cheating still. I don't know. And at this point, we have to carry on as if she's innocent because you can't that's, that's say someone's point. guilty. Like, I yeah. think it's fine to say like I don't know still, but you can't say like. You can still have your own doubts, but you can't call anyone a cheater without proof. It's just but, but this to, to say that hand is not in like the top whatever craziest hands. It, I mean, she raised called Jack High on a ten high board. I mean, the, 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 just for any amount of money. It's just like it's not her money. It's, I, I think she just blacked out. Like to me, it's like I've done. Like I'm not saying I've done stuff like Jack Four, but relative to my poker experience and my knowledge i've done stuff equally stupid does that make sense as in sure. like like sure. maybe for me in that spot it's you know calling with ace I'm high not... or something i don't know it's a different threshold yeah. but i've done stuff for sure equally stupid and for sure dumber like where and in the moment like or after the, the thing happened i think back to that moment where i made the decision like a snap decision or a tank decision or whatever 
And I can't really quantify what I was thinking or feeling. It was just emotions as a human being. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. Like the point yeah, is but, like- but, but, but Nick, there's a big difference. When people have that moment, they get fucking stacked. That's what happens to people. They don't sure, end up against the eight high and then they, they hold on two runs or whatever. You I know, mean, that's, that's a big difference. Sure. Okay, listen, either way, I think we can both agree there's a lot of arguments for cheating and there's a lot of arguments for no cheating. Yes? Yeah, we can, yeah. I also think we can agree that like, Without proof, it's unfair to call anyone a cheater. Yeah, that's fair. And that's just like pretty black and white. Like it, the reason when this whole thing happened with Robbie, like Garrett knows I wasn't involved in the moment for sure. He chose to use it as an opportunity to try to get me out of the games for sure. This is like obvious. What did he, what did he say? Because I remember this happening, but I mean, he just like kind of threw my name in the mix because I got dinner. Where, where with was it? What, what what did he say? I don't. Remember. I remember. I know. I remember that like the the rough estimate. Can you ex explain for the viewers exactly what happened? To be honest, I also don't really remember because I read it once and I was just like gross and done with it. But like basically, it was just like he said, like I'm a person of interest or whatever because blah blah blah. But the point is like, um, sorry, I like lose my train of thought because I have ADHD. You're talking yeah. about you're talking about with Garrett and when he threw your name out there. Yeah. And, and and talking about like w what happened with Robbie yeah. and we're saying right, cheater right. or not so, cheater or whatever. So like, that like that that whole thing like that was his attempt to like use polit like politic in the game and stuff. And I think like in poker and in gambling, like if you call someone a cheater, like that's that's super serious. And that's why I got so upset that when that happened is because he knows I'm not cheating, but he's accusing me of something that is like really, 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 really bad in our world. You know, it's, it's like, I feel like, well, you, game, yeah, I mean, you, you, you were in a really unfortunate spot there because you had hung out with them like the nights before or whatever, and you've been agree. posing pictures with them. And then, and then it, it, I think it came out that where the, his money, buying came from, right? Did you say yeah, loaned him the money? Yeah. You loaned him the money. Yeah. So, so afterwards, and like we talked about this during, you're like, Oh shit, this doesn't look good for me right now because yeah. i had this picture and then whatever but you you actually probably got fear old the way that that went down maybe yeah, like, i, I think i was probably more of a victim than he was to be honest like <laughs> genuinely like I, I honestly think i was like probably in a bad I, I don't know i don't want to talk bad about jacob and sure. robbie because at the end of the day like i i think that like some of the things i said previously were a little unfair to them because i was emotional and like sure. I will say on, on Jacob and Robbie, I'll say this. My interactions with them were positive on an interpersonal level. I never felt like they were doing anything wrong when I was having dinner with them or talking to them. I felt like they were in love with poker and like the stream and stuff. And maybe that's just me being naive or whatever, but I never personally had any bad interactions with them. And all the negativity that's kind of swirled around our relationship has come from after the fact where like I have been like speculating, which probably isn't fair, but that's what I was doing, speculating on whether or not I felt like I was getting free rolled or cheated or whatever. And, you know, part of that was just like, I felt like, you know, I need to defend myself, but also part of it was just me being emotional. Sure. But my point in all this is to say like, in, in, in gambling, calling someone a cheater is like the biggest accusation you can make. It is. That like calling someone a cheater with no, no proof is like pretty bad, but then calling someone a cheater and then, doubling down after people have like looked into it and you've had the chance to look into it and you still can't prove anything, but just saying like, I know I got cheated. It's just not right. And like, it's not, it, it's just not right. And like, I just think that's black and white. Yeah. So two things on that. I, I first off, I think in terms of my interaction with Robbie, you know, in, in person, she's been great. She obviously came out here. Um, she played in our stream. She's played other streams. Obviously if, if cheating happened before or not she's not cheating now for sure and so to be willing to do that i think shows that mm -hmm. it's a little less likely that she was cheating before but also on a personal level she's she's been great to work with mm -hmm. um I, I, as for as for the cheating thing i do think it is fair to say that it is likely that cheating occurred here and talk about your reasons why because if we can't do that then we can't have honest conversations about what's happening in poker and i think those things are important so i think to call her she is a cheater robbie cheater is not okay because that's not true. We don't have the proof. But to say, I think she likely cheated because of these reasons. I think that that is fair, right? I mean, and I know that sounds like a thin line, but I do think there's a line there. Yeah, I think the line is just saying, I think versus she did. And that's, right. to me, like, Garrett can say, I think she cheated till the cows come home. That's fine. But you can't, like, call someone a cheater and then continue to say they're a cheater. And, like, the way he's doubled down on it, I think, is just, like, too much. I mean, like, I get it. Like, I get it. It sucks. You got, you lose a huge, you lose a big paw, you lose some money. 
I mean, in reality, it's not that much money given the games he's playing and whatever, right? But, like, it sucks. You feel like you got cheated. It sucks. I get it. But also, like, at some point, you have to set aside your ego and just acknowledge that, like, there's no proof. And you can still say, I feel like I got cheated, but I, you know, I'm moving on because there's nothing I can do. Like, you can acknowledge both yeah. sides of it. And I think the fact that, like, I don't know, just the way, he, like, he's going about it. And, like, I know he hasn't said much lately, but it's just, like, when it happened, it was just unnecessary. And, like, I also just think it's pretty – I think as who he is in poker, Garrett um, kind of owes it to the community to act in the right way. As in like, basically like what I mean by that is like, I think a lot of Garrett's financial success in poker has become because of the streams and like basically like the opportunity he got playing on them. Right. Which he got because people like are fans of him and his play style, you know? That being said, I think he kind of owes it to the community then as like the winning player setting the example on these streams to do things the right way in every spot, which is why it's so lame when he won't straddle and he does all this game selection stuff and rating players, right? But that's all behind the scenes. I think stuff like with this cheating thing, which is like in front of the public is even more important for him to handle the correct way. And like, you can't just like, you can't just stand up and call someone a cheater because you lost a weird hand. Like no matter how weird the hand is, like, Listen, there was a hand on Max Payne Monday, which is a different game, but I'm just going to – different stakes, right? But I'm just going to give you the hand. We're on the river. It's a double-paired board, and the guy calls with, like, three deuce, like, three high or deuces, deuce high. Like, he plays the board or something. I think that's what he had. He deuces, and, like, it was double-paired. So he played the board, and he called the river shove. <laughs> like, what? You know? But, like, just weird shit happens. And But did he get stacked? Of course, he played the board. That's what I'm points. saying. Like when these hands happen and you black out, you do something this stuff, you get stacked, and you're like, "Oh shit, that was stupid." That's how these things work, Nick. Okay, but like the example I gave earlier, where someone accused someone of cheating in a private game, right? The guy won. Like he did something incredibly stupid, but he 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 sucked out. So I mean, like, okay. I I just think that like, yeah, but in, in that one, he got it in bad. Like I'm telling you, when people black out and they have these moments, they get it in tremendously sure. bad. They like. It's almost never the sickest hero call can, ever. Either way, can we? I, I think we can agree that like, there's no point in debating the hand. In yeah, fair. Of, okay. In terms of like the, the quality of the hand, I think the point that I really think is important is that there's no proof, and like, sure, we it's time to move on from Agreed. calling someone a cheater and accusing them if there's no proof. And like, I think it's like it's just like funny. Like Garrett tweets like, you know, when the million dollar cash game was announced, he's like, I, I'll play or whatever. Like if I whatever like, he wants to play this thing, like he chooses to play. It's not he chooses to play. It's you know, Nick and Ryan choose when he plays and like he wants this image to be that he's like in control of everything that's going on. And it's just like, it's just not, he's just not like, he's is not he, in charge of any of it. Would you say yes or no? Because there's been so much back and forth. Is Garrett banned from hustler? No, he's just, there's no game for him. Like, I guess he's self, he banned himself by being a nit <laughs> and like, making it so no one wants to play with him, right? Like, he's banning himself. Be Garrett, come play this Friday, buddy. Look, I'll, I'll call Robo. I'll call all the Super Pros, and we can have a Super Pro game. Like, no problem. But he won't show up. So, basically, he won't play because the games won't be good enough that he could play in. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. All right, let's uh, let's wrap this up then with, a, with one, one, one or two last questions here. So, how do you see this playing out moving forward? Uh, do you see Garrett playing more poker do you see him ever coming back to Hustler? Is there going to come a point where he either plays in some of these tough games or do you think players will want to play with him? And I guess, like, what's the sentiment of the player pool? Because I've talked to a few guys, right, who are pretty fired up about this, but what about just, like, the most of the players at Hustler? Do you think that they would be okay playing with Garrett in the future? No. I think, like, at this point, like, I think Garrett's kind of dug his grave and he's going to have to lie in it. Like, it's been years of this crap and, like, this stuff has been happening – and has been known behind the scenes with the players for a long time. And now players finally feel like they're able to actually express their opinions on the situation. And like people just black and white say like, they're just not going to play. Like if he comes back and like, I mean, I, I know you talked to Ben and Ben will probably like, is very, like very passionate about this, but like he, he said black and white, like he's just like, I won't play if he plays. I mean, if people aren't willing to play with you play, like I, I feel like there's just nothing you can do. I mean, it is what it is. Right. And do I think he'll ever get play on stream again? Yeah, I'm sure he'll play on like other streams. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he came out to the lodge or the bike. Do I think he'll play on Hustler again? No, I don't. I think that bridge has kind of like been burned and like the boat is kind of sailed. And I think like, I think Garrett kind of like knows that when he says like, 
fuck me or whatever he said and whatever he said like i think he's like kind of choosing to like go a different path from hustler and like that's it is what it is but i think it's important to like clear the air about like his time at hustler and like in the player pool that we're in and like his true behavior because you know say what you want about me i'm loud i'm annoying i'm obnoxious arrogant i'm asshole whatever right but i think i'm like a pretty good person and like i think i do things in poker the right way you know and I say what you want about my poker skills. I don't care. Like, doesn't matter, right? In same way with Garrett. Like, I think Garrett's probably one of the best live cash game players in the world. And you know, <laughs> but also like probably one of like the shadiest people in how he's conducts himself in poker. And like, I don't mean shady as in like he's doing things that are unethical or like against the rules i mean he's just doing shit that's like grimy and like grindy and like it, it's just a little bit like too money hungry and like you know you just can't be like that you just in poker you can't you can't be so thirsty for everyone's money and it, eventually like people get tired of it i mean losing players especially in high stakes usually know they're losing and they also usually understand pretty well who's winning like it's not like these guys who can beat the market or have made billion dollar companies can't figure out who's winning and losing in a poker game. Like it's, it's not hard, you know, it's, especially if you play a couple times. So they know who's winning, they know who's losing. And when they show up for a lineup, right. When, when Ryan texts whoever for a lineup, you know, recreational player, they look at the lineup and say, I'll play. They essentially know like who's winning money. Right. And like, these guys are smart. Like people think, oh, they don't know. They, they're not thinking about EV or whatever. But they are. They're smart. They're, you guys are fucking smarter than all of us. That's why they're so successful. That's why they have businesses. Like that's why they're crushing the world. Like they're smart. And like they choose to show up and play with you knowing they're essentially giving you money because they're getting something out of it. And it's, and like if you're not giving them something back, like they're just not going to want to play with you. And at the end of the day, like in high stakes, you have to be like someone people want to play with. Like that's what matters more. Like people get all worked up about private games and you know, blocking and all this shit. Like, I mean, I'm blocked from some games and I'm totally fine with it because like, I understand why I'm blocked. It makes sense to me. It makes sense why the game runner would do that. And that's why he does it. I have no problem with that, you know? And like, I think, and like, it's better for the game for me not to be there in some of these games. Like, it's just better, right? Like you, you bring another winning player to the game, whether or not people think I'm winning, it doesn't matter. But like the game runner thinks I'm winning, you bring me to the game. It's worse for their ecosystem, right? So they don't want me in the game. That makes total sense, right? But it's about the ecosystem in the game. It's not like – it just becomes so much when, like, one player is – who's already winning the most, has the highest EV, the most edge. Like, Garrett studies everyone. Like, you know, I can say this. Like, I don't watch the streams back almost ever. And I've never had a training site subscription. I've never had a coach. I've never even, like, sent hand histories to a friend. Like, even now, like, I'm good friends with, like, Brown Baller, for example. I don't send them hand histories because I think they all suck. Like, I just want to do my own thing. Like, I don't think – getting like a subscription to training site like matters like i just play but Garrett whoa, whoa 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 let's let's just take a step back some training sites can be very helpful to your game and bottom line head on over now to upswingpoker.com <laughs> we'll see you there use code nick airball <laughs> i don't know i wish we had that for 744 percent <laughs> off 744 your first 750k free on, on upswing.com yes. the first 750k <laughs> you spend at upswing is on me all right anyway sorry go back to it um so like i, I don't know like i just think that like it, poker is just like not i think poker is like pretty like um representative of like the real world and like it's just not like an equitable thing and people who idealize it to be equitable or whatever like they don't get the reality. And like, I think, I just think like the reaction from people online with all this kind of says it all. Like the people who are standing up for Garrett are either people who don't know anything or are people who are incentivized to stand up for him. And so like, I mean, I can't, like, I only want to say things I can prove. And so everything I've said today, I can prove, but there's like other things that like go on behind the scenes that like, I, I just don't want to say, cause I can't prove it. But like, I, you know, when you look at the players who are standing up, on his side or against hustler or whatever, it's all people who are incentivized to just for their own bottom line, you know? And I think when you, when you take a, like a step back as a viewer and you just look at it black and white and you say like, you know, what is hustler? Hustler is entertainment, right? And in order to have the entertainment, you need the game to be good and you need the game to run and you need to have the players want to play. Right. And so as a player, you need to, as a winning player, right. You, you have to think, 
how what is in production's incentive, right? Because it's not about what's in the game's best interest in these spots anymore. It's about what's in production's best interest. And so I think like winning players in these spots should always think about what's in production's best interest because that's how you're going to maintain yeah, but it. You and Nick, you have people who see the exact opposite shit. You see Berkey going on his podcast and talking about how the shows are taking advantage of you and they don't realize and, and all this nonsense and all this like they're doing things wrong and they're t- and then and exploiting and burp, burp, right, burp, 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 is with live of the bike. So he's and also, can, you, know what, honest, you know, what, I've been cordial with Berkey lately, but like this thing with you and Berkey. What a fucking bitch move. I, I'm sorry. I just have to say it. It's like completely insane to me. So Nick hits me up. He's like, yo, I want to play Berkey. Let's fucking make it happen. I message Berkey. I'm like, hey, Berkey, a.k.a. owner of a poker training website. This guy named Nick Airball wants to play you high stakes heads up. Let's fucking go. And then he's just like, oh, this, that, and the other. Like, I can fit you in on the ninth. Oh, actually, the ninth, I have an appointment. And then I'm like, look, the calendar's open. I messaged Nick back. I'm like, what are you free? He says, all days. Basically, <laughs> his response is like, any day. Like, you can pick a day and I'm free. I go, okay, Berkey, can you work this into your schedule? It's any day. And he goes, oh, let me take a look. Ooh, the 13th is looking pretty bad. And then and it goes back and forth. Finally, we set a date. And then he's like, oh, I getting on that day. Like, what the hell, man? You own a goddamn training website. And Nick fucking airball is calling you out and you're just you're just busy permanently my fucking god i mean i i got i just i can't berkey i just can't even with that guy it's yeah unbelievable. I, I said it on stream before it's unbelievable I, I don't really care like berkey's a scammer that's the truth like eh, you know people may think that's like unfair to say but like when you run a training site and you can't beat the games like you, you're a scammer like that's you're selling like bullshit like that just is what it is like you're a scam artist right like if some guy walked in off the street tomorrow and said i'm gonna open a poker training site and I have tells on every single player and people start signing up. We would all be like, this guy's scamming. Like it's a joke, right? Same thing with Berkey. Like essentially he's scamming. It's just, he talks with big words and he's been around and whatever, but like people who know he does talk with big words. That's a yeah, good like, way to people know Berkey's like poker history. All know he's like a bum. Like he sucks. I, I wish I could play Berkey heads up and I suck. Like I would love, like it's just free money. Like, <laughs> <laughs> more, more heads up challenges being issued here berkey if you're watching or someone tells you nick airball will play your poker i think a schedule let me see yep still says all day is available so and, just and he can sell action he can do anything like f- like it's kind that of kind of free money like I, I can't say no to so he can sell action whatever i would like to play as big as possible but i'll play you know micro stakes if that's what he wants um but you know he, he won't play either that's the thing like you know one thing i want to say is when I'm gone from poker, I'd like to at least be remembered for putting my money where my mouth is. Because I talk a lot, but I'm ready to pull up with the money and play. That's all I can say. Like, That's great. That's great for poker. Nick, thank you very much for coming on. When's the next time you're going to be playing so the viewers can, can watch? Today, when, today at Hustler, Wednesday will be fun. And then okay, cool. Friday, this Friday should be really fun. I got to get unstuck from last Friday. So I'll be blasting. And uh, people can follow you. Where do you like? You seem like you tweet a bunch, right? At Nick, yeah, Nick Herbal, I think, on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Okay, add Nick Airball. You guys can check him out. By the way, guys, before we go, we have finally set it up. Use code Nick Airball for 25% off at upsinkpoker.com live now. Head on over and get your poker training. Compliments of the chef. Thank you, Nick Airball, for the people. <laughs> Nick, appreciate you coming on today. Thank you guys for tuning in. That's going to be it. I will see you guys again soon. Thank you for watching. How do I end this? Oh, here we go. Thank <laughs> you.